Hey there, and welcome to week six of our six-part series on the topic of joy. This has been a devotional series we've been with for six weeks now, and if you're just tuning in right now, just hang with us through this. If you'd like to go back and watch the, the series, if you've been with us through the whole time, you've made it to the end here, and I'm excited to talk to you today about joy uh, in our future. Now, to recap where we've been, week one, we talked about joy being consistently available to you. Week two, we talked about obedience to God's word, fueling your experience of joy. Week three, we talked about that your expression of joy is a lifestyle of worship. Week four, our, that joyful generosity furthers God's mission, both in you and in his church. And then week five, we talked about how your joys can be a context for your most profound experience of joy. Today, we're saying that your, your greatest joy today comes from knowing that greater joy are, it lays ahead of you. When we moved, uh, my family moved to Toledo in 2011, and we, when we moved here, it was under some unique circumstances. See, we had built a home in, in Indianapolis in 2008, which seemed like a great thing to do at the time. We didn't know the housing market was about to crash. And as it did, it, it, long story short, it made it impossible for us to purchase a home here. And so we were in one rental environment to the next for our first uh, several years here in town. And just not good environments from one time to the next. Uh, one of the homes we were in, we had water coming through an electrical panel in the home. Now, I don't know a whole lot, but I think that's not a good thing. Another place we had water coming in uh, when it rained through a bay window in our kitchen, just pouring down into the house. All right, these just It was uncomfortable environments. And even when we got into a rental scenario that was comfortable, we still knew that it wasn't going to be home forever. Now, as we wrestled through this and as we sought God within it, that whole experience, those, those first five or six years here in town, reminded me of something important. That my time on this earth is momentary, but my time in heaven will be eternal. Right, 2 Corinthians 5 says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, that the old is gone and the new has come. And the language there is language of creation, that something altogether new and amazing has happened in you when you receive Christ as your Savior. Old is gone and new has come. It goes on to say that your citizenship then becomes in heaven. 1 Peter 2 even goes as far as to describe us as aliens and strangers here within this world. All right, there's a spiritual reality that we experience when we come to know Christ, that this world is no longer our home but our home becomes in heaven. And the challenge then is to figure out how do I become less conformed to things of this world and the patterns of this world? And how do we become more transformed by the renewing of my mind to think spiritually and to think about where I'm at and where I'm headed through spiritual lenses? As we look at this, a lot of it is looking through and trying to be like Jesus. And I like what it says in Hebrews 12, one to two. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every, every weight and every sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. Now catch this part here. It says, let us do that looking to Jesus, who's the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. Right? It made me think, what is the joy set before Jesus? Well, part of that joy is, is the hope of heaven. It's the same hope that, that you and I can know through faith in him. But another part of that joy is that, is that hope, that anticipation that we will share that joy with him, that we'll share in his joy and be with him throughout eternity. Now, here's the question. If the joy set before Jesus was strong enough and powerful enough to help him to endure the cross, something of that magnitude, then what might the joy set before you help you to endure here today? Maybe it's a financial hardship that you're walking through and you're just not sure what, what the end of it will be. Or a relational hardship with someone that's close to you, maybe a friend or a family member that you're walking through. Maybe it's something at your job or workplace that you're walking through that you go, oh, I'm just not sure how to handle this or how to reconcile this or what to do with this. Maybe the joy set before you is what will empower you to walk through that with strength. 
That joy set before Jesus was strong enough to help him to endure the hardest thing imaginable, a crucifixion. And I believe that it can help you to walk through what you're walking through here today. Now, I love what an author named Mark Buchanan said, thinking about the joy set before him, thinking about heaven ahead. He wrote this. He said, all the moments of joy we can imagine. And he thinks about some, a child coming into the world or rain after the drought, a doctor's report that there's no cancer, or even finding Max wagging his tail up at the top of the steps. Each of them, all of them are little glimpses of heaven. And the joy we feel at these moments is the smallest foretaste, a mere touch on the tongue, the faintest echo, a whisper grazing the ear of what we will experience in technicolor and surround sound in heaven. It'll be infinite joy without taint or diminishment, sustained for all eternity. Here's my encouragement to you as we, as we wrap up this series on joy, is to let the joy that's set before you ignite the joy that is set within you to overcome the, the trials that surround you. Let me say that one more time for you. Let the joy set before you ignite the joy that's set within you to overcome the trials that surround you. See, when you rise above the trials that surround you, when you rise above the, the inconsistent experience that we have to experience a consistent joy that's rooted in, in your future and what you know to be ahead, what you do is you get strength and God gets glory and the world around you takes note and says, wow, so a relationship with God can actually transform not just my hope of heaven, but my experience here today. All of that comes from that, that focused attention on the author and the perfecter, the founder and perfecter of your faith, as you focus on Jesus Christ and what he's done and what he's doing and what he's about to do. Today, choose to pursue the joy of the Lord, expressed and fueled through obedience in Christ. And I pray that you'll, you'll discover the joy of the Lord is the strength for your life. So let me pray for you. Lord, I just thank you for, for the person watching here today. And I pray that they, you would help them to understand a hope that's in heaven, that is strong and that's secure. Lord, that nothing can come between them and your love for them. And that as they respond to you, as they choose to trust you, and they can look forward to a confident hope in heaven that's strong enough to sustain them through whatever they're walking through. Lord, help them to see and understand and, and comprehend that the joy set before Jesus helped him to endure the cross. And I pray that in the same way, the joy set before the person watching today will help them to endure whatever is ahead of them in this day here. Go before them, Lord, fill them with your spirit, fill them with your joy. And as they choose to choose joy today, I just pray that there will be a fullness in their life that might even catch them by surprise and that the world would take note that you are God, that you are good, and that you're able to bring joy in the midst of any circumstance. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me leave you this one verse, Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by, power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.